Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so the mic is working. Cool. Okay. Let's let's start working on the game. Um. Yeah. So today we're gonna do some uh, some more data modeling. And um, yeah. So what are we gonna do? Uh, nope, that's not what I wanted to do, Chrome. Okay, so... Yeah, so we're gonna start by uh, reworking a bit the enemy definition. So last time we did the enemy definition asset and we've... Um, um, yeah, we've added the name for the enemy in the asset. And we we've added it as a string, and uh, that's not actually correct. Uh, I would like I would like it to be a uh, I would like that string to be localized. So we're gonna do that real quick, just so we we have it there. And then uh, yeah, then we're gonna work on the level definition asset. So um, yeah, what's uh, yeah, let's see what what the level is. So. Here's the level definition asset, which is basically a list of waves that the user has to complete in, the, in that specific level, after which he can uh, expand the tower. So that should, uh, uh, yeah, that should work out. Uh, or yeah, we should do that real quick. Uh, it's not gonna take a while. I, I put an hour, but. Um, because I'd like it to make uh, to make it look pretty in the editor, maybe add some functionality there. But uh, yeah, we'll see. And uh, after that, we can start working on the on some uh, managers for for those. Uh, so one of them being the uh, the wave manager. So actually, no. I think we're gonna start with the enemy manager, which. Um, the enemy manager is going to be basically the spawner. This manager is going to be responsible for um, spawning enemies and keeping track of them. And uh, he's going to get commands from the wave manager. The wave manager is going to tell the, the enemy manager, okay, uh, here's the list of enemies that you have to spawn. And uh, the, enemy, uh, the enemy manager will do just that. And uh, when the enemy manager notices that... Uh, uh, all of the enemies uh, have died. It's gonna notify the wave manager back um, to let him know that, yeah, that's uh, that, that the yeah the, the the wave is done. After which, the wave manager um, is gonna start a countdown um, uh, for like, so is, so so basically the, the countdown being the uh, the cooldown between uh, between waves. And uh, yeah, so, so so it's kind of you know in an order. It's like a chain of commands. So yeah, the level manager says stuff to the wave manager. The wave manager says stuff to the enemy manager, and then it goes back up. And uh, yeah, continuing on that note, so the wave manager after the countdown, it's gonna notify the level manager that okay, this wave is done. Um, and uh, yeah. What the level manager is gonna do is okay. So so this is the wave that has been completed. Uh, um, let's see what the next one is. It's gonna look in the list of uh, in the list of waves, and it's gonna notify the wave manager back with uh, with the the current wave that he has to deal with. So yeah, that's kind of uh, that's kind of it. Uh, the level manager is gonna do more because as I said after after you complete uh, all the waves. Uh, you'll have to, um, yeah, you, you'll be able to expand the tower. Uh, but uh, yeah, so 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 you will be able to expand the tower, but you're not uh, you're not forced to do so. Uh, the game will still continue indefinitely on this uh, current uh, on this current level uh, by recycling the the waves uh, from the level. So you, so you could theoretically grind. Grind forever 
at, uh, at a certain level uh, and then expand the tower. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's what, the, so, so the level manager is just going to continue stuff, but after a certain number of waves, um, um, it will notify some other part of the game that, okay, uh, the level is actually done and um, you can enable the, the expand button, so the expand functionality for the tower. But uh, that's not something we're going to do today. We're going to plan for it. Hey, Zara. And then the game manager is just uh, like, uh, um, yeah, it has a, a general overview over the game. It's basically going to deal with, uh, with the state of the game, like uh, being paused or not, um, like showing the pause menu. Um, yeah, with UI that has to disappear when the pause menu is is shown and stuff like that. So it's kind of yeah, it it has a high overview of the game. doesn't really interact with uh, with those uh, other systems. But yeah, we're gonna start with the with the localization of the enemy's name. Uh, we're gonna do that real quick. Because it's not, uh, it's, we, ju we just have to, to change the data type. Okay, let's put this in progress. Let me get back my group in here. Okay. Let's put this here. Okay, so let's start the timer. Uh, let me check if yeah. So so I have uh, everything works correctly. Okay, so let's uh, go to the enemies. It should be in runtime and enemy definition. So this is just a simple thing here. So yeah, instead of string, actually instead of string, I don't know what data type I should put here. Um, what have I used data types in? Wait, what have I used data types? Not in waves. I've used them somewhere. Upgrades, yeah. Upgrade definition. Let's see what localized string. That's the one. That's what we want. So let's add localized string here. Let's import this. Yeah, import this. Now let's get back to Unity and see what, what happened. So instead of having a, a string field in the enemy definition which we can find where where do we have here yeah dummy enemy definition yeah so instead of having a string field in here where you could type the name uh, you have this localized string so you get the the name from uh, from, from the table uh, i'm not gonna set up the, the name just now because we don't need it uh, but uh, I'm not entirely sure that we're gonna have names uh, for the enemies, or at least a name in the sense, uh, like uh, in the UI in the game. I don't know if we're gonna ever, we're gonna ever show the name of the enemy, but uh, just in case we need it, uh, it's gonna be set up. Okay, so yeah, actually that's it. That's all we have to do. Let's save just to be sure everything is done, and yeah. Yeah, so localized string, and we've imported that. Yeah, th this looks fine. So the task is done. And it took us like only a bit past two minutes. Yeah, it was a it was an easy task, but uh, I remembered uh, that I had to do this uh, after the stream last week. So, so this is a feature. Is the feature right? Yeah, because I put it in programming. It's not a bug. Cool. Okay. Um, let me back. Get me my board. Let's. This is complete. Okay, now let's start with the level definition asset. <coughs> okay, let's track the time. 
okay so going back to do this um so yeah uh, we're gonna have a new folder for levels i guess um yeah directory level levels with an s yeah sure with an s uh, let's add the runtime folder and um, actually no, uh, we're gonna start adding the no 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 let's let's create a script so we can copy the names. Um, okay, so level definition. Okay, it's gonna be a script double object and of course it didn't wrote the correct um, namespace so yes this dot uh, levels dot runtime so this is namespace let's create the assembly reference so it so the game was about this um, this file assembly definition reference and it's gonna be called like this and select here the runtime the definition. Okay. So it appeared. Yeah, now we're now we're good to go. Okay, so let's see what uh, what I said uh, that we did in here. So. Ah, God damn it. Yeah, so so theoretically we only in, um Yeah, we only need um a list of waves basically. List? No, we should make it an array. But yeah. Um, actually, public. No, let's make it private. Wave definition array. So those are the waves. Let's make this a serialized field. Okay. I don't think we're ever gonna need the list of all the waves, so we're gonna make some methods of getting the waves uh, waves based on the on an index. Or do we need the waves? So in in, in the game you you won't be able to see the the waves. I mean, there's, it's just something that's gonna happen in the yeah in the game, but you won't have knowledge of specific waves. For a, for a specific uh, level, and the level, uh, the level manager. I don't think he needs to know the list of waves. He, yeah, I think he needs to know how many level, uh, how many waves there are in a level. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do that. So let's make some some functions here. So get if at int index uh, int index. I know we're just gonna return it. If it's gonna throw an error, that's perfect. So we're just gonna go into waves and then just get the whatever it's at index so if it goes outside of bounds it's perfect because it's gonna throw an error so that's that's actually amazing I don't have to deal with and then return it get wait count and I don't think I have to call this I can just do it get the length and actually that's all I need on the outside I don't need anything else let's um, create an asset name for this 
and you name a project tower with a small O here waves wave the uh no 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 not waves uh, level 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 definition and let's call it levels level definition yeah let's see how it looks I don't know where I should put this. Um, yeah, let's make it a green games. So, game, let's make a folder called level, uh, levels. <laughs> and let's create the, or let's you put it, it up. So, project tower, levels, level definition. Yeah. I did the same for waves, right? Yeah, waves, wave definition. Upgrade, upgrade definition. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so levels, level definition. So first level definition. Uh, first of all, I want to remove the monoscript because it it's ugly. Hide monoscript. Let's see it now. Much better. And then we have a list of waves, and then we can add waves to it okay now i wonder if, if we should uh, do some checks on this on this uh, on this array so first of all i would like it to to have a check uh, if it's empty yeah so it'd be good to know if if, if the list is empty i mean that doesn't happen uh, unless it's the, the the first time when you created the the level definition, but yeah, that would be a good check. And I wonder if I should check for duplicate uh, duplicate waves in the list. A bit of the wave definition. So what does the wave definition do? So we have the enemies. We have the 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 count of the enemies. How many enemies should be spawned? And then we have um, multipliers for stats for for that specific enemy. Hmm. I just thought of something. It would be cool to have. Okay, so on the dummy, on the enemy definition, you only have the name. But I uh, previously I was planning adding uh, a, a list of stats for the enemy, but uh, I ha I had no reason to do so. I mean, I, I had no. Uh, Yeah, I, I haven't have found any use for that because I, I changed how I wanted to do things. But now that I think about it, I think I think a list of stats would be interesting uh, because I could uh, use it in here in the editor. So when you add uh, multipliers, I could check if this stat is on uh, is on the enemy definition. Is it, uh, I mean in the enemy definition, and if it's not, I could uh, just throw. Her. I think I can do that. Yeah, so that would be that would be nice because it would uh, alert you that you've uh, add multiple stat that is not available in that specific enemy. So yeah, that that could be a, a, an interesting improvement for the for the for the user interface. And I I should make this a little bit more prettier because it's uh, it has uh, add some spacing and stuff in here. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I am gonna do that. Um, uh, let me see. Yeah, let's make a, a task real quick for this, and then we'll get, uh, go back to our to our level. So let's get out of this task and add a new one, a new task. 
and we're gonna do this uh, probably next week I don't think we're gonna have time for it uh, today so actually uh, we're gonna do two tasks so the first one is gonna be add stats list in uh, the enemy definition I can't see shit let me get this more in front of my face okay stats uh, stats list in the enemy definition we're gonna throw that in the backlog um, I'm not gonna estimate it uh, and yeah that's it so create this one and then we're gonna create another one what's this uh, dependency on 5.7 check in and check in wave definition uh, to see if uh, is that you know that um, Appears appears in the enemy definition. Yeah, and also we're gonna throw it in the clock. Not gonna estimate it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to to the to the level definition. Yeah, so what was I doing? Actually, this is a capital I. I don't like it. Better. Okay, so, so we have the level definition. We have a list of waves. Now, ah, so yeah, I was thinking about uh, variation. So, yeah, I, I should do one for having no waves. And then uh, do another one. Yeah, I was thinking about uh, duplicate ones. Um, yeah, I don't think we should have duplicate waves. Hmm. Not sure if we should have duplicate waves. I mean, it would make sense to have duplicate waves if we extract the multiplier. We kind of can't extract the multipliers outside of the, the wave definition. But let's say we have a base, uh, like a base definition wave where we say, okay, I want this type of enemy and I want uh, them to spawn. And then from somewhere outside, you could specify uh, uh, the multipliers for, the, for those specific enemies, for the stats of the enemies. But as we have it right now, I don't think we can, I mean, no, for sure we can do it, but it would be a bit awkward to have the, the multipliers in the level definition instead of the definition. Because it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the level, but it has all to do with the, with the wave. So yeah, I don't think, um, Yeah, I think we're gonna we're not gonna have uh, the definition uh, wave definitions in here. I mean, actually, now that I think about it, yeah. So, so, so what I was trying to, so what I'm trying to do is or prevent is uh, accidentally putting two wave definitions in here. Uh, so have like to accidentally put two in a row or something. So I can either block it. I mean, I can't actually block. I can just, uh, yeah, put a message that okay, this is not correct. You shouldn't have different uh, waves, you know, in this list. I could actually 
prevent you from dropping um, or whatever, adding a wave definition if it's already in the list, but. Yeah, I think we're gonna add. So, so yeah, there might be the legit cases where you would, pure, where you would, want maybe the same wave. Or, yeah, I'm not sure. Actually, you know what? We're not gonna have duplicate waves. So we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna write some. Uh, some val uh, validators for this field and just uh, yeah if we have duplicates we're gonna yeah find that out in an um, error message so let's see if we can do this so we have validate input what does this do for us so we need a Message and a message type. Yeah, actually, we're go we're gonna use uh, so yeah, okay, I know what to do. So let's make a private. Uh, actually, should it return anything? I don't think. No, I, th I actually I know. I think it it should return a bool. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm sure, it's gonna return a bool. Validate. Waves. Return false. And name of this. And then. So we're going to have a ref string message and a ref. Um, info message type is this the one uh, type let's look at this constructor I think it was info message type I could be it's info message type and let's just look at this so if we have oh it first tells us the the value and then it's it's telling us the the, the references okay so first Let's do something like this. Waves and that. So let's try it like this. We're just gonna always uh, send an error message or something. Yeah, so it's not an error message because I haven't put the type, but it says error in here. That's that is good. So now let's start by actually doing the first error message. So if the waves dot length is zero, so let's return false because the input is not correct. The message is gonna be or something. The type is gonna be error. Uh, uh, you need to specify at least one wave. So that's uh, let's return true if it's uh, if it doesn't get in the if. So we shouldn't get anything right now, but if we remove this, bam, then we we get an error. Then if we add something, if we add none, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's another thing that we have to we have to check for. So if we have nulls, yeah. Hmm. I wonder if we can. Um, yeah, so far. Hmm. 
or nothing to do this. I was thinking maybe not do a generic message and just tell the user something uh, um, like the index at which the problem is, because I don't have a name for that wave, but yeah, I don't think the, the index is that important because this list is not going to be that that big. So maybe we're going to have 10 waves, 15 waves, I don't know. So it's not going to be a big list. Yeah, so we're just going to do waves dot any I think I can use any wave um, if wave is equal to null so if any any null wave in here let's just copy this we're only gonna change the message you have you have um, empty waves in the list empty entries in the list please add wave for for those entries You can already see it, so it's gonna compile and write the, the full message. But yeah, we have it. So if, if we get rid of this, okay, we need at least one wave, and we add something, and we're gonna add none. So it's gonna say, okay, so there's an empty thing in here. You should add something probably. It's just still gonna show the message if we have one valid one and one invalid. So that works. And now if we add the wave definition. The error goes away, so that's that's amazing. Okay, now the only thing that we have to to check for is duplicates, and uh, I wonder how I can do this. So I I know a, a hacky way of doing it, but I don't know. So I could add them to a hash set and then count the... Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do, because that's the most easy... Because I, I, I don't... Do I care where the... Hmm... I wonder if I need to know... Um... Uh, the, uh... Yeah... Hmm... Can I do a var in here? Var a equals... No, I can't. So let's do it outside. So var duplicates. So I'm gonna write what the duplicates are. So so the the level designer knows. So we get the waves, and we're gonna filter through them. So this is our wave, and we're gonna do we're gonna go through waves again and we're gonna do a count uh, not i want the count but the count yeah this count where we have a other wave other wave or just other if other is equal to wave we're gonna count it and this has to be greater than one so we have at least one and we're gonna do this to list sure so if we have at least one duplicate um you yeah, have the following following it up here Equal times in the beer, and here um, let's add a dollar sign so we can write some pretty stuff in here. So we want string that join. Oh, god damn it! Actually, uh, can I can I use duplicate in here? Uh, for I have to add a separator. So just uh, like this. 
I guess. Uh, well, that's for duplicates I want. Actually, I'll do that here. So, um, select a wave. You want the, the name of the wave? I don't care about the instance. So, yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a problem. I I'll have to make that a hash set first. What I can do? No, no, I I can be smarter than that. So, so right now the problem is that uh, wave definition appears twice because first it's gonna check this and it's gonna find this duplicate. And then it's gonna uh, it's gonna look at this and find these duplicates. So yeah, it's gonna appear twice in the list. Thinking okay, so we get the the, the um, we get those two values and then throw it in a hash set and it's gonna sort this out for us because it's gonna be the same value. But we can be smarter than that. So here we do count. And we can do this a bit simpler, so we'll need the index. Uh, actually, oh, we don't get the index. Oh, that's that's sad. If I could get the the index for that uh, for this value, I could say okay, if it's. Uh, mm. Hmm, yeah, that's not cool. I, I can make my own count function if I want to. Just copy the definition from here and just implement it myself because it's not that hard to do. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And I'm gonna do it here. Um, and we're not gonna use this. I enumerable, yeah, sure. Predicate, so this is the source, and I want an, uh, an, uh, an int. Uh, to send an int and the result is a bool. Okay, so we're gonna return uh, source dot um, where of predicate then count it. Yeah, that should do it. And we can actually make this... Uh, I mean, we could make it a one-liner. See how it looks on a, on a single line. Not that, not that bad. I mean, I could do it like this. Yeah, sure, let's keep this. And then here, instead of doing waves dot count, we're gonna do count of waves. God damn it! Waves and this. And the where clause here, we're also a wave index. So what we're gonna say? Okay, if if the other is equal to wave, uh, but before that, we're gonna say if other index is greater than wave index. So we're gonna look through all the waves in here, but we're only gonna accept values that are that can, uh, come after this this wave. Actually, after this one. Yeah, we can do after and put a zero in here. 
because we don't take into consideration the 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 yeah the same index. Yeah, so now we only have it once. Because when we get this value, we're only gonna start counting after this, and after this, there's nothing but yeah. We're not gonna look at, uh, at values before before the one we're looking at. Cool. And actually, you know, I think about it. Instead of doing a comma in here, I might do a slash n and do a slash n in here. So we have them on. We have basically like a list of stuff. And I might do a. Let's see how we can do this. Something like this. Have them indented a bit. I don't know if I can do it with space. Wait, I did, that did nothing. Where's my line? Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna see the line for the first one. So I'll have to add it here. I'm gonna use tabs actually. Slash T minus slash T. And then for any in the join, yeah, we're gonna do the same. And I can actually save this. Yeah, that's that's a bit much. Well, this is the first one. So, uh, okay, it doesn't know what the space is, so let's do a space like a noob. We should get a space in here. Yeah. Ah, uh, this space is way too big. Let's see if we can use multiple spaces. Uh, that one is too. It with just one is. I don't think I can expect this, right? No, it's an angry. I was wondering if it... actually I know how to check for this. I can add more spaces and save and see if this this gap increases in size. Okay, so it takes spaces in, into consideration, but let's put five spaces. Yeah, sure. Five spaces. Yeah, that looks nice. The following weeks of here multiple times in the list. This one, this one. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I wonder if I can do like links or something. But uh, that would be... So it'd be interesting if you could click on this. But uh, yeah, that's that's a feature of all. I mean, we could try. Let's do, but I don't think it's gonna work. So let's try something simple as bold. Interesting if, if we have uh, tags in here, but I doubt, damn, it does support tags. Hmm. I wonder what else does it support. Huh. I guess it's time to Google. Um, what in inspector? Rich tags in messages. Yeah. So now I think now you understand why why I said uh, that it, this task is gonna take an hour. Because we're doing a lot of stuff to make it pretty, so the action functionality is is done. But I don't see anything that's um... that makes sense for us. And it's not something that I. That's some for some like bold or no. I, I don't even know how to how to search for that for this actually. But actually I wonder if I wonder if if Odin does this. The the, the bold tag or or if it's uh or if it's from Unity. Because it might be Unity. I'm not sure.
Yeah, but that's an, uh, actually that's not uh, that important. It's it's still that it has this. Uh, yeah, that I have the the list in here. It would be interesting to have uh, like an indication on each line or something. I don't know if that can be done. Actually, we can search for that, but that would be interesting to have, uh, instead of having it at the top, have an exclamation mark in front of each line. So let's see, uh, Odin, Odin, Spector, let's just look at the document because I'm not entirely sure where, where I would find this, but, um, so learn documentation, something with list will be list drawer settings. I mean, I, I saw something when I was, uh, what I for each list element, the member. Next parameter Huh. So we might be able to do this or to do something with it. So when he renders, we could do some checks. The member referenced. So it must be a void and uh, an index parameter of type int, which represents. Okay, so it's a bit stupid that I don't say here that. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's string for them, it's just a string for them, but for us, uh, it has to be a method. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think I think we can do this. Let's, let's try to do something with. So here in the level definition, we're, we're going to have val the validate input, but we're also going to add, uh, uh, what are we going to add? So this is a list drawer settings, list drawer settings and on begin list element GUI. I just call it, um, yeah, I just call it like that name of this and this is going to be a method in here so it's going to be private uh, void this int index let's make this private and what should we do um, Try something like this. Just put something in front. I wonder if it's in front of the drag thing. It's, it's above. <laughs> what? What? Okay, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this. I wanted something. I, I I wanted it to be in line, not on top of the field. Um, let's look some more, I guess. Um, because actually, what I um uh, what would be uh more interesting is uh color each uh, line, maybe. Yes. 
so I saw something when I was searching for that random thing, so so I was looking through this, I searched for bold, and I thought I saw something, um, or was it here? I thought I saw something, it might be, might be in... so, so, ah, we were looking at styles actually. Uh, no, so let's look in here. We we'll looked at something and I saw. I know. Now I can't find that. Oh, yeah, this one. So I saw something in here. List item, even. Uh, this is what I saw. Yeah, but that's not something I need actually. So I would need more, something more like uh, define a color for a specific line. And this is more like a generic thing. So it's not, it's not what, I, what, I, what I need. Yeah, we should do this. Because the number of waves is actually important. Yeah, this is going to be true. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So, um is it in GUI layout uh begin oh yeah so we have this begin horizontal thing in in GUI layout i wonder if i can do a begin horizontal in this method and then do the and there's a matching a matching uh class which is end horizontal and i wonder if i, I can do this on the on end so or what was that called yeah on end list element GUI and basically make my label and whatever Odin draws, uh, make them inline. Let's try that. That might be the solution to our problem. So this name of this, and that doesn't exist yet. Let's paste this in the, uh, not begin, I want end. I just wrote, no, it's ending here. Yeah, cool. So in here, we only need this end horizontal and let's remove the end horizontal in here. Yeah, so let's try it like this. Let's see if it does something. Yeah, that's it. Nice. And now we can write something in front of it. Add or add a add something a symbol. And that yeah, that's actually something I don't know how to do. But it be it would be cool to have something like this. And that still is a yeah yeah, it was an MQ container. God damn. Oh damn, they're using, uh, they're starting to use visual elements for, I mean, uh, UI, UI uh, toolkit for, for the inspector, that's nice. I wonder if they started using it for, no. The hierarchy is still, I'm GUI. I'm curious. This is still, I'm GUI. No, I wasn't expecting this to be, because it's not from them. But yeah, nice. I mean, slowly but surely they're, they're starting to transition to 
UI toolkit instead of I'm GUI. So that's nice to see. Yeah, we can do this, which is which is actually me. Let's um, can I just remove this because I don't need the index and an expression. And ah oh, shit. Let's see if you can make it smaller now. Hell yeah! I mean, it, it didn't retain the style, but that's actually easily fixable. Because now I can go here and say, what can I say? GUI dot skin dot label. I think that's it. So we should get back the the color and the styling. There we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. So now I want to add Ooh. No, I can't do that. Yeah, so I have uh, I somehow have to for, so so get the yeah I ha I have to do this the same validation as in here, but now I have to check for everything. Yeah, so let's let's do this this validation or the same validation as here. I mean, no, actually almost the same validation. So waves, not waves, but it's going to be underscore waves, as well as in here. So we have the wave index. We're going to put a different here. So we have, if we have any other duplicates, except, actually we can simplify it, because I can take myself into consideration and put a one in here. So if it's someone else uh, beside me, um, yeah, and we can use the the standard count method now. We don't know. Uh, we don't need my fancy one. Uh, I don't need the name. I just need the list. And actually, actually, I don't need the. List, I need the count. So I want to know if there are any duplicates. So this is a count. Uh, and yeah, that could be a count there. The count how many waves have duplicates. Or no, no, shit, no, that's not what I want. Because this, this at all the waves, so I don't, I don't need all the waves. I only need this. Actually, I only need this part. And this wave is actually waves. Uh, Index. So let's look at all the waves, and if there's more than one of this type, we know there are duplicates. So now, is there a um, uh, ASCII? Uh, um, error or something. Not an error. Error symbol. Yeah, sure. Something. Warning sign. Yeah, that's what I want. Uh, can I get... Hmm, I wonder what I can use in... Oh, interesting. I mean, I could just copy the, the symbol as is from here if I want. 
so I can just put it in here. That's not that cute. Nice. With twenty, I think twenty pixels is a bit too much, but uh, let's see. Hmm. Almost close, so I guess we're gonna need like sixteen pixels. Yeah, that should be fine. And then we can do. Duplic if duplicates, we're gonna show that, otherwise it's an empty string. And then we can do a normal text color. Hmm, no. I mean, yeah, but no. So, yeah. Let's put red in here. So if if I have duplicates, I'm gonna put this. And actually, let's uh, clip it on on a on a single line. Otherwise, we're gonna use the GUI uh, GUI dot skin dot label dot normal, not name normal. So if there are duplicates, we're going to write it red, otherwise uh, we're just going to have the normal. I mean, actually it doesn't matter, I don't think about it, it doesn't matter what color it is because we're not going to write anything. So let's make another wave definition and to have a, yeah, to have a different one that's not, not duplicated. Um, project tower, waves wave definition, uh, god damn it another wave definition let's go back to levels so now if i add this yeah cool that is actually so freaking cool i don't like this red so i'm gonna change that I think I'm gonna do um, one size. Can I do it? Make it a bit larger. I don't know if it's 16 is. I mean, it looks better with 16, but uh, we need a more a space on the width. So let's try with um, if that's 16. Maybe let's try it with 24, just to have space to. Uh, 20? The gap is too, too big. I don't like it. Yeah. Cool. And now I would like to have a, <laughs> a more uh, approachable color in here. I don't like that uh, intense red. So let's see what we can do about that. Um, actually, no, I know exactly what we can do about that. So material design colors. Uh, I think this is what we want. Yeah. So here are the reds. Now let's just take this and we have to transform it into RGB so new color 32 there we go ah, I don't take uh, wait ah. 255 for the alpha please let me use color 32 nice and yeah, no, that looks better. It's not that harsh anymore.
Okay, so we have. Yeah, and as I said, I can just copy this and use it whenever because we have a space. Yeah, the color is not gonna matter. There we go. And now we can do. I'm gonna do a check for uh for new as well. Yeah, so if duplicates and var uh, nulls, uh, null values, and we're gonna do uh, this check. Uh, var table. If duplicates or no values, do that. Otherwise, the other one. So now, if you make add, um, okay, let it compile. If you add a none, huh? You have empty entries in the. Oh, yeah. My bad. I don't have to check everything. I have to. I have to see if this one. So if waves of index is null. Not not if there's any null in the list. Yeah, there we go. It would be cool to have uh, tooltips. It would be cool to have tooltips. Um, I'm not sure how, how tooltips are possible with um, GUI load, but I don't remember how to do it. And let's just Google it. Um, We content tooltip. What's this? If they didn't have the moment right now. Wait. If the user hovers uh, the mouse over the button, the global tooltip gets. Uh, wait, no, that makes sense. And also, I would uh, put it on GUI layout. Okay, so maybe understanding correctly, instead of setting a label here, now uh, GUI or uh wait, no, actually, what was it? New GUI content. Table and tooltip. And we're gonna use the content in here. So let's see if that works. It'd be cool if that works. And we've actually passed the one hour mark. Hell yeah, we have a tooltip now. Nice. So I can write uh, cute messages. So null, uh, if null values, we're gonna say this value is entry 
doesn't and three doesn't have a value otherwise if duplicate value of yours more and once in the list and if nothing is happening we're not gonna add okay see it in action i wonder if it, if if i hover over this okay so it's empty it's not gonna give me a tooltip this value appears more than uh, more than once in the list this entry doesn't have a value nice and now now, now that i think about it i wonder if i should add this uh, thing uh, at the top because you get much more information from this yeah i think i'm not gonna bother with this uh actually hmm. what do we have tools uh, inspector and oh we don't have that yeah that's right so there is a thing that that all has which is let me see project data yeah that's the one so basically uh, whatever you use their um, uh, yeah their uh, their attributes and then you get this yeah you get this nice tour where you can see all the problems in the in the project but this is a separate asset and we don't have it So, even though it's cool and whatever, uh, yeah, I'm not sure we're gonna get it. But the idea is, the idea is nice. But yeah, I don't know, it's like 50 bucks or something. I, I, I don't remember. And 55. Yeah, well, yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> And this is yeah, this is fifty-five bucks for for one seat. So we are we are uh, we are two in the in the project. So we would need oh no no oh wait 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 wait. This is Odin, which is fifty-five. Oh, never mind. Okay, so the so the project validator is only thirty-five bucks per seat. So that would mean 70 bucks for both of us. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm gonna see a use to this, maybe, but right now. Yeah, I'm gonna remove this this from the top and just keep those. Uh, yeah, just keep the, those here. Hmm. Actually, no, I'm not going to remove it because this check is still valid, but, we, but you don't have any entries in the waves. Actually, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to keep them. I'm going to keep them both. Yeah. Because you can either see this up top. OK, so let's let's just get rid of this. OK, so you can see this up top. OK, so the following appear multiple times in the list so you see the waves and then you you see exactly which i'm referring to because the the icon before them so now i think i think i'm gonna keep both of them both both of the warnings and we also need it for, for this, where you don't have anything in the list yeah one thing I'm gonna want I'm gonna want to do. Um, so let's put this on multiple lines because uh, this is getting too big. So show uh, 
paging false. I don't want paging for this. I would I just want an endless list because we're we're gonna have uh, only like maybe ten items in the list, so doesn't I don't I don't want paging for for those items. It's not necessary. Yeah, I think this is it. I think I think that's all. Uh, that's all we need. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're gonna stop here with uh, th with this task. I don't think there's anything else that we can do for for this. So a little bit. Uh, 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 over the over the estimated time of one hour, so yeah, I I knew why I, why I had to put one hour here. <laughs> I knew that the the task was easy. But I'm gonna add some crazy stuff to to it and just uh, yeah, it's gonna take quite some time. Okay, so let's let's commit this. Collaborate. Actually, let's first do some. Uh, so this is a folder, this is the reference, this is the actual file that we've made. Those, those are the methods that we need in the end. And everything after is validation. Mm, I could do a region for this, that would be a bit better. So. And actually, oh, we're not using the, I was wondering if we we're using the uh, uh, Unity Editor import, but it's not the case, so we don't have to encase it in, in any statement. Okay, so we have this. Cool. And after this is just uh, yeah the level definition asset. Wait, what are why are there two assets? This doesn't make sense. There's only one asset in here. Oh, this is the asset with the capital I. So it doesn't. This doesn't know that I I've changed that. Can I um. I mean, I can select everything and then maybe discard this. Yeah, no, that disappeared, but it's still in the list. <laughs> so stupid, discard those as well. Okay, we're not gonna get rid of those. But the level disappeared from here, so yeah, let's create it again. Levels, le God damn it, level, level definition. Yeah, we're just gonna commit everything and... Yeah, not, not uh, be bothered with it. So let me get the, the name again. Uh, feature... Create level definition asset, yep. And now he doesn't know about this file. Of course he doesn't know because it doesn't exist anymore. You stupid. And I can't force. There's no way of forcing a recheck of the project. God damn it. No. It's so stupid. Yeah, I can't force a recheck of the project. I have to. But I, I thought they've they've added that functionality. But I guess. Yeah, I can't like right click on something and make it. Nope. Okay, we have to restart Unity. Yay! <gasps> the music has stopped. We've gone through two two, al two albums. Um, what should we listen to? Ah, uh, that's um. Actually, 
Yeah, sure. Let's uh, let's uh, listen to some downplay. And that's not in the list anymore. So we're good. So feature publish. Awesome. Okay, so I think we're gonna start start the anime manager and then the waves manager, which is gonna call the anime manager, and yeah, we're gonna uh, and the game manager. Yeah, we might or might not do it this time. I mean, there's not much that it's gonna do. It's just gonna listen for controls and just show or hide the pause menu. Okay, but we're gonna start with the enemy manager, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. Okay, let's track the time so we don't forget. So where is? So this is the level manager. Wait, who's uh Oh never mind, I was talking about the enemy manager. This one I mean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well Yeah, I'll we'll just start doing it and um we're gonna borrow some stuff from something that we've already made, which is the, the spawner. Because basically, uh, the enemy manager is gonna be a spawner for the enemies. But, hmm, should it be? So, so the thing is, uh, we're gonna have. So, so the the. the the enemy manager is going to receive a list of multiple enemies that he has to spawn. I wonder if each, if he should spawn all of them or if we should delegate this act to something like a spawner as in as it's in this case. So basically the enemy manager knows about all the enemies and it has a list of spawners. And each spawner uh, knows how to spawn a, a specific uh, type of enemy. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how far we should take this. It, it might get uh, a bit uh, messy if we do the spawning in the enemy manager as well. Because... Yeah, we'll have to know about multiple... Um, Object pools. Yeah, so we're gonna do we're gonna do the enemies with object pools. I don't think I've ever mentioned that. So we're not gonna or maybe at first we're gonna instantiate them whenever, and after that we're gonna use object pools. But yeah, so. Yeah, so I think it, it might get a bit tricky uh, if we do all the spawning in the enemy manager because different enemies will probably be spawned at different rates and we'll, we will have to keep track of all of this and yeah, this might... Um, yeah, this this might make the the code look a bit uh, unreadable. So yeah, I think we're gonna do it. so. The enemy manager knows about uh, multiple spawners. So for each enemy type, we're gonna know about the spawner, and 
whenever he gets information that okay he needs to spawn a certain amount of enemies uh he's gonna delegate that to the spawners um but there's something that i think i have to do first uh so i need food I need to eat. So, and actually, now, now that I think about it, yeah, yeah. So let me. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get something to eat, and then uh, I'm gonna continue with this. It's gonna just take a second. So what do we want? We want this and some noodles spicy noodles doesn't sound bad ah uh, but okay no, never mind i don't know what the spices are uh, made no just keep it simple Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Um no, oh, god damn it, just shut up. Good, so yeah, I think we're actually gonna start uh, with with the spawners and we're gonna reuse the dummy spawner and just add some added to it. I mean, I just uh, yeah, but yeah, we're gonna expand it because right now it's uh, not uh, the greatest. So yeah, okay. Um, actually, I'm, I'm gonna keep the dummy spawner and just do another one because I want to keep the yeah. I'm gonna keep the enemies rolling in the in the game for the time being until we we have all the system in place for for um, for playing a level. Just so we have something moving on the the screen. Let's let's. There we go. Yeah, so we're gonna keep this uh, dummy spawner and the dummy enemies for now. Um, but we're gonna remove them as soon as we have uh, the levels implemented. Cause until then, nothing's gonna happen. Uh, because yeah, we need all the system in place to. I mean, not necessarily. We can do some some test uh, methods. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, I, I'm gonna keep this for. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So let's make a. Um... Call it enemy spawner. It's gonna be a mono behavior, and that is actually one interesting thing. So, so I was thinking that, yeah, I was thinking of doing the spawning in the in the enemy manager, but and uh, because of that the enemy manager had to be a um, Mono behavior, but now that we are delegating the spawning to the to, to this enemy spawner, 
we can make the enemy manager a scriptable object as well. So we just keep it outside of the of the game scene. Yeah, that's actually nice. Actually, we can't do it because we'll have enemy spawners which are mono behaviors, and we'll need uh, references to. Yeah, we'll need references in the. Yeah, no, we still have to keep. No, but that's but that's not good because if you have the enemy spawner as a mono behavior, we'll also need everything that depends on the enemy manager in the scene as well. Yeah, I think we're gonna do some uh, some way of bridging the. But I don't know how to do that actually. Hmm. I mean, one way of doing it, if you want the enemy manager to be a scriptable object, we could just uh, spawn, or yeah, spawn this enemy spawner at runtime. That's one way of doing it, and that might be a good way of doing it. So, or spawn the, spawn them whenever we need them. So, uh, by default, we have no spawners and then if we if the the wave requires us to have a spawn a new spawner or a spawner for a certain enemy that's when we're gonna we're gonna uh, uh, create this spawner and then we're gonna uh, pre-warm the the object pool yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. So yeah, the enemy spawner is gonna be a mono behavior, but it's not gonna exist in the. It's gonna be a prefab that we're gonna spawn whenever we need. We need a spawner. Yeah. So yeah, so uh, we're gonna need a. Uh, what do we need? We need. So we need a tower data. The tower data. What is the tower data? It's so connected to the scene. It's so connected to the scene. Yeah. So we need a tower data. Because we need the splines from the tower, so we know, yeah, where to send the enemies. But yeah, now this is another dependency that's in the in the scene. Mm. Okay, so let's think a bit this through. So is there a reason to have those managers outside of the scene? Because maybe there's no reason that I need that. Because obviously I don't need those managers outside of the game in the, I don't know, main menu or something. So no reason to keep them. I mean, even even as a mono behavior, I could have them outside because I could put them either on in prefabs and do a non don't destroy on load or something or whatever that was called I don't think yeah I, I don't think I need them to be um, outside of the scene actually they could keep them all in the scene and that it that will fix all the problems. No more spawning. We're gonna have all the enemy spawners available. We're not gonna uh, pre-worm the uh, the object pools. Uh, 
before we actually need them. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so, okay, let's start by ha by having the tower right here. Um, okay. Spawn rate. Yeah, that's a good one. That's something that I haven't added to the wave manager. Oh, not wave manager, but wave uh, definition. Uh, wave definition. So we have this, whatever, enemy definition. Uh, not enemy definition. Oh, well, yeah, wave enemy definition, yeah. So we have the enemy that we're gonna spawn. We know how many we're gonna spawn. Some multipliers for the stats, but we don't know how fast we're gonna spawn them. So that's something we have to add here. We have to know the spawn rate. So let's uh, actually just copy this from here, because it's... Uh, this is a, a, a good way of doing this. So let's do it with like this. Up, float, spawn rate, spawn rate. And now that I uh, see it, um, we don't have to. We don't have a way of getting the multipliers out of this. So we'll need to do this as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it like this. Um, let me see what notifications do I have. Oh, wait, what? Oh, oh no, no, he's almost here. What the hell? That was so freaking fast. I was expecting my food to, to, to arrive in like 20 or 30 minutes, but it's almost, uh, in front of my building. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so we have the spawn rate. Let's do a uh, a method. Let's do the method that we're gonna call from the enemy manager. So that's gonna start the, the the spawning so public void um, um, I don't know what the name should be so the enemy manager is gonna say uh, uh, let's call it setup And he's gonna give us something like this wave enemy definition. Oh, he's almost here. So, gonna wave enemy definition, wave enemy definition. Yeah. And then with this, we're gonna, yeah, whatever we wanna do with it. Private. Let's put an underscore in front. Okay. Actually, that's actually no. That's not everything that we have to do. It's somehow we have to to start the spawner, but uh, I mean it could be simple as. 
so this is a uh, this is a class so so you have an update function yeah I'll have to go to the door uh, in a couple of seconds so yep I'll be right back
Oh my god, I've just talked to myself for like, what, 10 minutes? Oh, Jesus Christ, I forgot to turn on my mic. <laughs> ah, shit. Fucking shit. Okay, so so let's recap what I what I've done since I came back from from getting my food. Yeah, so what I was saying was, um, yeah, I forgot to add uh, the prefab. So so on the on the anime mission, we don't have a reference to the prefab. So that's what uh, what I was going to do. And I was trying to say that uh, I'm not going to use addressables for this, like I did for 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 the modules. So uh, if we go into the tower module uh, module and uh, tower module data, we have this asset reference for the prefab, uh, and we we have this because we're gonna have a lot of modules, like maybe hundreds of modules, and we don't want all of them to be loaded into memory. So we're going to use this to only load the modules that we need and unload the ones that we no longer need. But for um, for the enemies, I don't care uh, about that because uh, even though we're going to have enemies with different stats, that's something that's going to happen at runtime anyway. Uh, but the, 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 the base enemy is going to the same and we're only gonna have a, a couple of them like I don't know five or six uh, type of uh, types of enemy or, or that's what we've planned for right now so it's not gonna be uh, that huge uh, on the memory so we can keep them in memory uh, even though we're not gonna use them for like I don't know 10 10 levels so that that's uh, that's actually okay so yeah we're just gonna keep uh, keep the the prefab as a uh, as a game uh, directly as a game object in here like a, a hard reference this has to be a private and yeah and then and we're gonna expose it like this and now here we can go into the wave def uh, wave enemy definition which has an underscore in front Go to the enemy and get the prefab, which I forgot to make it uh, to make it public. Uh, make it public, yeah. So you get the prefab, instantiate it. Uh, for now, we're not using this. We're not actually. Let's just let's just keep this. So yeah, we're gonna have the dummy, the dummy enemy for now. We're gonna use the dummy enemy. I'm not gonna uh, apply the line to it we actually can't add a button to this because I actually know I think we can but we'll have to set up um... yeah yeah we can put a button on that and now that I think about it, yeah, we're gonna get rid of the dummy spawner because we have to test this enemy spawner. We, we don't need anything that's gonna uh, annoy us when we test it. But yeah, uh, one other thing that we have to do so is is uh, keeping track uh, track of how many enemies we've spawned, so we don't uh, go over the over the limit. So private int uh, spawned enemies. We're gonna reset this in here, and yeah, whenever we do spawn an enemy, we're gonna increase this, and after we spawn it, um, we're gonna check if this is, um, yeah, let's keep this more is equal than wave definition dot count. So if it's, God damn it. If it's uh, more than the limit, or if we we've reached the limit, um, yeah, we're gonna this is not that self-explanatory. So we're gonna stop spawning. 
So let's make a, a, a function that private will avoid stop spawning. That's gonna do just that. It's gonna make this null. But it's uh, it, it's better this way because uh, you you get what it's doing. So you know exactly what setting this to null mean. It means it's gonna stop the spawning. Okay. I think that's all there is to it. We haven't used the multipliers yet, but uh, we're gonna do that when we we make the actual enemies. So uh, let's put a to do here. But I'm gonna make a task for this. So use multipliers. So we 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 somehow have to use multipliers in here. So yeah. But for now it's okay. Uh, let's get back into the game. So we have the dummy spawner. I'm gonna disable this. Um, enemy spawner. Enemy spawner. Let's assign the tower which is here. And then we have the setup. Yeah, and we're gonna do in here but let's play let's start the game actually so nothing is, uh, nothing is spawning now we can get to the enemy spawner and we can invoke this so let's spawn dummy enemies and uh, that's not gonna work so we've added that um, that prefab to the enemy definition but we haven't assigned the yeah we haven't assigned the prefab Let's try it again. Enemy spawn. We want a dummy enemy. We want, let's see, five of them, one every second, and we're not gonna have any multipliers. Invoke. One, two, three, four, five, and then it stopped. So now we have five. Uh, dummy enemy going through the tower and then they're just gonna loop right here oh no uh, the tower goes on yeah my bad now they're gonna loop one two three four and five nice I mean uh, the enemies shouldn't loop uh, in the in game they're gonna go to the top and uh, damage the, the crystal on top but, uh, right now the that's how the enemy or the dummy enemies are, are made to to just loop um, whenever they get to the top but yeah so so we have okay we have we have spawners and we use the the data from the from the wave definition to to big spawning um, procedure So that's actually nice. And now, now that we have this, uh, let's get rid of this button. Now that we have this, we can create the enemy manager. And... Um, Um, should we make this, no, start with it as a mono behavior and that's it. We're gonna have a private, private list of something, so... Actually, can I do this now? Um... So what do I want? I want a an, an enemy type and an enemy spawner. So I need enemy definition, enemy def, enemy definition, and enemy spawner. 
spawner spawners serialized reference so I wonder if it's gonna do it's gonna do well with uh, tuples I th think that's that's something that 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 is supported uh, enemy manager enemy manager yeah Odin even knows about this, so it renders this uh, nice. Uh, but it, but we don't have we, we we still get them as item one and item two instead of using those names in here, which is not that cute. Then I can do without this. I mean, if I can use as as uh, as few as uh, as few series uh, references as I can, that would be amazing. Yeah, we're gonna do a public class enemy enemy to enemy spawner we're gonna have public um or public yeah no oh let's make it uh, let's make them Private, private enemy definition, and definition, and enemy spawner, serialized field, serialized field. Let's make this system serializable, and let's also. Public enemy definition. Do the same for the oh shit. Do the same for the spawner. This public public enemy spawner like this. So we're gonna have a list of this and just serialize field right here. There we go. Let's add a hide monoscript in here. And let's add the also public void um what should we call, what should we call this? Um actually setup I think is the, the best name that we can do. So we are going to receive a wave definition actually, I think. Or should we receive an, an array of those? I think I'm going to receive the, the array. We get an array of this. And... Uh, Disable in play mode, private dictionary from enemy definition to enemy spawner. Now let's do this on a week. So spawner dictionary uh, is spawners dot uh, to dictionary in the definition and v dot uh, no v to v dot enemy spawner. 
So we're gonna make a dictionary from this. So now in the setup, enemies dot for each. Now we can do uh, spawner uh, spawner dictionary of enemy uh, setup. Oh. This. So you give him a, an array of enemies or whatever. We have definitions. Today. Let's call it like this. So we, we get wave enemy definitions, and for each of them, we look at the dictionary, we get the spawner, and then we set up the spawner to, to start spawning basically. And now that I think about it, um, hmm, how should we do that? So, actually, have we done that? Let's look a bit at the at the waves. So you could theoretically add multiple of the same I mean here. Wait, why why do we have two multipliers in here? That's not that's not right. Um What have I done? Ah, shit. This has to be like this. Awesome. So I'm thinking if we, if we'll have, but I, I don't think that's, I don't think that, that's okay. To have the same enemies spawn, uh, yeah, the same enemy in the in the wave, uh, with like maybe different multipliers. I don't think that's, that's okay. I think that I I, I might have uh, talked about this last time. I had like a deja vu moment. Um. Yeah, so so the problem is that if we have the same enemy uh, uh, multiple times in the list, uh, as we as we've done this here, so if we go to the enemy manager, and here we're gonna get the same spawner, so we're gonna do the setup. Uh, shit, we're gonna do the setup twice. So we're not gonna spawn uh, both types of enemies. We're just gonna spawn the last one. That's not okay. But I don't think uh, we should spawn the same enemy multiple times. Or at least not, not for now, because um, now we, we're not differentiating between enemies. So maybe in the future we're going to have like, okay, we have this one type of enemy, but uh, let's say here you can define. Uh, but uh, that's not something can do different enemies for that. I'm thinking maybe we could apply, uh, let's say we have a, a, a material field and you can apply a material there and that material is going to be applied to the enemy. So uh, you're not going to have, you, you could modify the enemies at, yeah, from, from, from the definition file. But then again, we could make different types of enemies. So, so you'll have different enemy definition for this, which here has a, Material field or something. So then, yeah, when you go when you go to the to the wave, you're not gonna have that problem because it's gonna have uh, it's gonna be a different enemy. So so you'll need a different spawner, which is not that. I mean, yeah, yeah, you'll need a different spawner for him, maybe. Or you could use the same spawner. No, not the same spawner, um, the same object pool, I mean. So you could have the, oh, the same object pool and then after you get the enemy, just apply the material, maybe. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So for now. Yeah. Okay. So with definition. Um. I'm gonna make a task for this and just uh, make the same the same thing that I've done for for the level. I'm gonna do here and uh, basically throw an error if you have the same uh, enemy device because that's not supported. At least not. I, no, I I don't think we're gonna ever support that. We don't actually need it. So yeah, I'm gonna make a, a task for that. Uh, but before that, let's put some music. Yeah. Now, what are we gonna listen to? Um, state of mind. Yeah. Sure. It is. Okay, let's make that task and then I'm gonna get back to this. Whoa, we're good. We're good 50 minutes in this uh, for this task for the enemy manager. So, actually, let's pause this um, at 51 minutes and I'm gonna restart the timer after I make the, the new task. So, new create task. Add. Let me error in wave wave definition as I'm gonna throw it in the backlog. Yeah. Okay, so let's track this again. Okay, so we're not gonna think about this right now. So when we're in the enemy manager, we're gonna have uh, the same. Uh, we're not gonna see the same enemy twice. So um, that's okay. Let's make this a bit more manageable. Let's put five enemies there and put. Um, or like, no, well, let's put uh, ten enemies and do a spawn rate of 10 units per second and the multipliers we don't care about that let's save this enemy manager spawners let's set up the spawner so this is the spawner for the dummy enemy let's actually call this uh, dumb, uh, dummy enemy spawner Now that I think about it, this spawner doesn't have uh, doesn't have anything to do with the enemy because all the all the data in is this tower data. So yeah, I think we're gonna go back to to, to creating them at at runtime whenever we need them. So yeah. Yeah, but for now, yeah, we're gonna keep the we're gonna keep the list. I don't want system in here, um, and I want this to show in inspector, and this is read only. Uh, and hide in editor mode because we only need it at runtime. And actually, instead of disabling it in play mode, I'm gonna hide in play mode. So basically, the the list is gonna is gonna be uh, replaced by the dictionary at runtime. Yeah, so let's do that. Let's play. Here's the dictionary, the key and the value, and of course, I have to add a button attribute for this, so we can test it. Let's play, set up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, no, let's add a null. No, I can't do that. 
yeah, I have to define it here. So dummy enemy, yeah, uh, we, we will need the wave manager to use the actual uh, asset, the wave asset. I mean this. So let's add, let's say I want 10 enemies and I want them at a spawn rate of, let's say five, just why not? Invoke. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Faster than I than I could. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Da. There are ten enemies in there, and we can actually found them in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, ten enemies. Spawn ten enemies. Um, uh, in in two seconds. Yep. So that worked. Now the thing left to do in the enemy manager, and that is um, keeping track of the enemies. So we know when the yeah when the basically when the, when the wave is done, and we also have to do the uh, no 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 yeah we'll have to know when this is done yeah. Don't need the dummy spawner anymore. Need this. So let's see how we're gonna do this. So I I have an idea of how to do it. Let's see. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna use is and I don't know what put this this file let's just put it in well, let's close the script because I don't need those let's just add it here so I'm gonna use something from ES framework which is a set a transform set spawn enemies list so uh, a runtime or a, whatever a set is just a <laughs> is just a set of of things. Um, yeah, it's just a set of things. It's a list of things, and you can add you can add to it and uh, remove whenever, and just use it uh, to basically count or uh, get access to to different things. And there is a special component that comes with the transform runtime set, which is this add to transform runtime set. And what it basically does is okay, give me a transform set and give me the transform that you want to add to it, which is this transform set. By default, it, it, it gets the one um, from the game object that you put the component on. And it, then it's gonna add it to the list. So that it's as simple as that. Uh, I'm not sure though if, um, and I hope it does that, if it's gonna remove it at, yeah. So when uh, when the game object is destroyed, um, it's gonna remove it from the set. So yeah, that's actually the most important thing. Yeah, so now what we're gonna see if we play the game again, uh, and we have to, yeah, damn it, we have to do this whole thing again. So. Yeah, add a definition for dummy. I I can't wait to do the the wave manager, so I don't have to do that anymore. So let's okay. So let um let's lock this. Let's get a properties for this. No, just let's just let's just keep it. Here. Okay, so right now there's nothing in the in the items. Now I'm gonna invoke this. So we're gonna spawn an enemy, and here we have it. So now we have a reference to that enemy. And now with this list, 
we can look we can uh, we can get this list in the uh in the enemy manager and see when all the enemies are dead and um, yeah when the list is empty basically there's there are no enemies left so we're we're gonna know that uh that yeah the we can uh we can go to the next uh, to the next wave so yeah in the enemy manager uh we are gonna add so those are the spawners which yeah we're not gonna need um um Private transform transform runtime set. Uh, uh, spawned enemies, alive enemies. Um Yeah, I'm thinking if um when we do the setup if we should uh, uh immediately spawn an enemy. Cuz right now uh so we do the setup, we whatever, set everything up. And then we're gonna do the first spawn after this amount of time. So we might just be inclined to do uh, uh an unspawn here. So it, so uh, as soon as you set up you immediately spawn an enemy. And that's gonna fix something in the enemy manager because we're gonna have a, um, a private pool. let's call it running we're gonna set this to true after we set up everything and then we're gonna have an update method if not running do nothing but if it is running uh, if this list is empty running is false and now that I think about it, uh, this has an error. So there could be a moment where you where you've killed all the enemies on the screen. I mean, all the enemies that are that, that are spawned, but there there are more that's gonna that are gonna be spawned. But there could be a moment where, where you don't have any enemies on the screen. And with the way I set, it, uh, set this up, uh, the system is gonna think that, oh, all the, all the enemies are dead, so we can just uh, move on to the next wave, which is not correct. So actually, we can't use uh, runtime sets for this. We can't. We'll have to, so when we do this setup in here, we'll have to somehow remember what spawners we've used and then interrogate each spawner at update and see uh, if there are, uh, oh no, no, yeah, actually no, we, 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 we have to use runtime sets, but we also have to uh, interrogate all the spawners that that are currently active um, 
to see if there are more enemies uh, um, if there's gonna be more enemies uh, spawning in the future because if because only when there are no more enemies uh, that's, gonna, that's gonna spawn and all the enemies are dead that's the moment when we should say okay uh, the wave the wave is is uh, is done so so we have to actually in here save uh, Private um, enemy spawner active spawners. spawners. And let's, uh, let's see how we're going to do this. Or should I make it a list? Um, actually, I haven't even made it a an array. But uh, no, I, I think it's uh, easier to make the list. I mean, it's easier, but should we? No, because we're going to get a lot of resizes. So no, let's keep it an array. And let's do it like this. So active spawners is. But we're going to make a that has a side effect that's gonna look so ugly so ugly okay so we take each one of those we select if enemy definition god damn it gonna make an array out of this and on top of this we're gonna set spawner right here it's a bit ugly that this uh, this function has a side effect because it's calling something on the outside but yeah This way we can keep it uh, compact and only go through this list once. Okay, and now uh, one other thing that we have to do in the enemy spawner, we have to make a way of uh, interrogating for um, if the if the spawning is done. So public. Hmm. So do I care how many enemies there are left to spawn, or do I care uh, if there's anything left to spawn at all? I think I think we're just gonna do a bool because we don't need a number um, outside of this spawner. So we're just gonna do a bool. Ball. Um, And this is, what is this? So, we're gonna look at this, at the count. We're gonna subtract the spawned enemies. And we're gonna look if this is greater than zero. And now, you can use the active zone. So, if there are no enemies alive, and Active spawners that any uh, actually does it have a none? No, I 
actually we're going to use all and the not in here. The, so if so if all the spawners don't have enemies left to spawn and the uh, libraries are uh, the list is empty, then we're going to set running to false. So this is going to stop the cycle in here. We'll make a way of telling the 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 above manager, which is for the enemy manager, is going to be the wave manager. We're going to tell him, okay, um, I'm done spawning. But for now, this is okay. This is. I don't know what this is, why it happens, but I'm gonna look into it if it uh, if it appears again. Okay, so we have the enemy manager theoretically. God damn it, I don't want the system in here. It's stupid and it's annoying. Okay, let's try it again. And actually, yeah, let's go to the dummy. Me and yeah, so if the distance is greater than this, uh, greater or equal than this, destroy the game object. So we're not, we're gonna stop making the enemies loop. We're gonna make them die at the top, and to make it simpler, uh, let's get into the tower. Uh, tower runtime. No tower entity. Wait, no. Where's the tower builder? Oh, here. Runtime tower builder. And I want uh, this tower to. Oh, god damn it! It's a twenty. Uh, let's add five modules to make it short so we can easily see uh, what it does okay and also in the enemy manager let's add the console login here because otherwise we're not gonna know then There we go. Let's see if this works. Uh, is there any I can alive enemies? Yeah, I have to assign this. And I think there's something else I have to assign. So let's try it. So here's our tower. It has two lanes. So let's make this. Let's add one enemy definition. Let's add this. I want, let's say, 10 enemies at 2 per second, and that's it. Let's pause here for a second and let's look at our list. Uh, this sector is locked. So we have 10 items in the list, and that's exactly what, uh, what I wanted to see. And we should uh, this list decreasing as the enemies uh, reach the top, because they're gonna and they're gonna disappear from the from the spawner too. There you go. They're gone. They're gone. The last one is done. And uh, well, that was close. <laughs> so. Has enemies left to spawn? Oh, that that does make sense. God damn it! Uh, this um, if it's different to, to null and 
yeah so if, if it's not null and there are enemies to left, uh, left to spawn because if you don't have a definition there are no enemies left to spawn yeah yeah let's try this again hopefully it's gonna work okay this time can't I can't wait to get rid of this I want I want that that wave manager so I don't have to click on those things anymore um, 10 enemies four per second sure let's make it fast let's look at the list the list gets populated and we're gonna stop seeing them disappear there we go bam 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 and there we go the enemy manager set down spawning and everything is dead so that works that actually works nice okay so the only thing left to do in the um, enemy manager would be a way of uh, telling the the wave manager which we don't have currently but uh, yeah we'll need a way of telling him um, okay we're done spawning and uh, you should uh, go to the next wave or something or, or or more like the enemy manager shouldn't know about the wave manager but the wave manager should have this information so maybe we're gonna add an event and actually that's better i think so in here uh, this, and it's not going to be private, it's going to be a public event action and no, system. System action. So it doesn't import the system. Um, system action on, on spawning. On, on complete. On complete. Let's call it complete. And uncomplete is gonna be called here. Invoke. And now, uh, yeah, whoever wants to know about when the enemy manager has done, uh, has stopped doing stuff, just gonna come here and hook. Uh, yeah, just uh, subscribe to this uh, to this event. And now that I think about it, so I said uh, to instantiate uh, spawners at runtime, I think I can use a, an object pool for this. <laughs> I have the whole functionality for instantiating stuff at runtime. So I think I'm going to just use a uh, uh, an object because why not? But one thing that I would have to change is not use the lifecycle component. I'll have to use a mono behavior directly and yeah, just change this check in here. So I think I'm gonna do just that. So make this a mono behavior. Uh, this is no longer needed for that is playing. Um, private uh, life cycle service, life cycle service and serialize field for this. If is playing, yeah, that's all we have to do. So now it's a simple mono behavior. This uh, this dummy and enemy spawner, which is not dummy actually, and yeah, because it has the same name, so so the the, the life cycle that we we've just used previously had the same field in, so you need to just use the same data. That's okay. It just picked up the value automatically. Uh, let's hide the mono script because it's ugly. And now what we can do is just get this enemy spawner in here. 
we can make a not pool uh, ESF object pool enemy spawner object pool we're gonna use this um gonna pre-worm uh actually no nah, we're gonna pre-worm it and we're gonna just do two spawners by default yeah so this is uh, so i don't think i've shown this before so this is a class from s yes framework um for for yeah so yeah for 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 making object pools and it has a couple of features so yeah, basically, so so it's a so so the whole functionality happens in this uh, in this asset, which is a uh, scriptable object at at its root. And um, yeah, you can just uh, hook it wherever you can uh, import it wherever. I mean, import it, reference it. Yeah, that's the word. Reference it wherever, and you can use uh, values from it. And there are a couple of things that he needs. So, so the, there is this world sync service that, uh, that comes with yes framework. And uh, what this basically does is lets whoever wants uh, lets it uh, lets uh, him hook to to the to the update events from the from the game. So, so the and the object pool uh, needs those update events because. Um, it's gonna spread the the spawning of the the elements in the in the object pool throughout uh, multiple um, frames, so it doesn't freeze up uh, the game when you want to to spawn like 100 things in the in the object pool. It's just gonna divide those across multiple frames. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, so you give it the template, which is the the object you want to spawn. Uh, it has a concept a concept of chunks. Basically, uh, um, chunk is like a, a group of uh, a group of entities that you want to spawn. So I, right now I said okay, uh, the chunk size to be two, and we're gonna uh, spawn. Yeah, we're gonna spawn uh, whenever there are there are no more objects in the in the pool and you, and you want to get another one we're going to spawn a chunk so basically we're going to spawn two in this case uh two spawners um there's another feature which is uh, pre-worming so basically uh whenever the the a scene loads it's uh pre-worm it's gonna it's gonna instantiate how many chunks you want so in this case the pre-worm one chunk so it's gonna tell me so the pre-worm size is how many spawners it's gonna uh, it's gonna create um you can set a limit on how many chunks you want to spawn so maybe i only want um uh, 10 chunks and if i go beyond uh, it's gonna just uh, return me null it's or yeah it's gonna say okay i don't have any more objects for you do whatever you have to do information so there are cases where you would need this but for for this uh, for this one uh, we don't need to limit the chunks and there are some other pre-worm options that we can uh, we can use so you have a a, a a way of specifying this and um this is actually quite a cool one so where have i put it in the esf internals so let's go back to the object pool. Let's assign this extra pre-worm options. So by default, the 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 the, uh, the pre-worm is automatic, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, the same. You by by, by providing those uh, extra options, you can disable the pre-worming, so you don't have pre-worming, uh, and uh, basically. You can, I mean, you still have pre-worming, but you have to call it yourself whenever you want it. So there's a method called pre-worm on the object pool, and you can call it whenever you want it. It's going to do uh, uh, pre-worm as many chunks as you want. But if you leave it on auto, one thing that you can do is um, you can specify 
on which scene to pre-warm the, the, this object pool. So right now, yeah, if you don't, uh, don't specify anything, uh, it's going to pre-warm every time. But if you specify a scene, let's say I'm only going to specify the playground. Now, if I, let's, let's save this, uh, and I need to reference this object pool somewhere actually. So have I made, uh, in the enemy manager, let's make this object private object pool from ES framework spawner pool. Let's make a serialized field. So we need the reference to it. So the, so unity knows about it and, um, yeah, executes the code. So let's get to the enemy manager. Let's assign this pool. And now if you play the game, there we go. The enemy spawner object pool was pre-warned and it has no objects inside because that's what we, that's what we chose for our uh, chunk size. And, and it has a cute little feature for, for edit time only, for editor uh, only. When you it tells you it, it keeps a reference to the to the original uh, uh, object pool, so you can uh, debug this. Yeah, and um, yeah, if you if you go back to the preform options, uh, we can say okay, I don't want to preload on uh, on, pre on on playground. I to preload only on localization test for for example. And if I play it again, I sh I will not get. I won't pre 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 warm. This. So you can basically make um, uh, object pools that only spawn objects on uh, certain levels, or actually not cer not certain levels because you can you can still use the object pool right now. But uh, when you're gonna try to get an object, that's the moment when it's gonna spawn them. But um, yeah, if you want to pre-warm and have them have some objects uh, available right away, you can specify when you want them to be created. So, so you basically get pre-warming like only in the on the on the game uh, on the game scene, not in like the my main menu or settings or things like that. But for now, we're only gonna need. Um, yeah, we're not gonna need this. We 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 want to pre-warm it every time for now because we don't have like a scene. This is just a a a, a place where I throw random game objects and them. But yeah, yeah. And now we we're gonna get the the pool with the this inside. And uh, if you look at the service inspector we're gonna see our so no this is the runtime set where is it enemy spawner object pool so it's here so it's basically also a service because it looks at when the scene is when a scene is loaded and uh, it does stuff uh, i wonder why it doesn't so yeah uh Yeah, that's a bug. So as you as you saw the the object wall, which is this one, has a dependency on the world sync service, and that's uh, service dependency. So this helps sorting the list. Here we go. So it got, well, yeah, it got uh, later in the list. And now it says that it has a dependency on the world uh, sync service. So, so basically by, by adding this uh, attribute on a, on a service that, uh, that you're depending on, uh, makes it so when the, when the list, uh, let's say when the, when, when you load a new scene and every, every one of those 
services are uh, have uh, that uh, special method called you are guaranteed that the world sync is is gonna update before your um, your other uh, service so yeah that that's uh that's something that I omitted, so that should be there always. But yeah, and now that I think about it, I have to check my other uh, managers that I to see if they have the same problem. But I don't think I have any more dependencies on on the others. But yeah, I just ensure the the order is correct in here. Okay, so now we have the object pool for this. And now, uh, instead of searching for a, for a spawner, we can actually just get the spawner. So spawner pool dot get, and um, yeah, get a component and spawner. So now, um, and we can get rid of uh, this whole thing above. Awake, we don't need this dictionary anymore. And everything should work as before. So if we go to the enemy manager, um, let's play this actually. Let's make a wave definition in here. Yeah, just whatever me is okay. And if we invoke, it's an error. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. So we threw an error because now we have to. So because it's it's a it's a prefab now it no longer has a reference to the tower data, so we need to specify that. So yeah, it does make sense that it that it uh, that it did this. Tower data, tower data. So we'll have to pass in the tower data as well, and uh, because of that, we need to get this. And also, we don't need this to be serializable because we're gonna get it from the outside. The lifecycle service is okay to have it here because that's a, that's a scriptable object, so it's outside of the scene. So let's get the tower data in here and let's just pass it when we do the setup. And we can actually remove this, uh, come on load, remove this. So we have the, the enemy manager, let's assign the tower data which is here. We have the spawner pool, we have the live enemies and then that's it. We have the the invoke method. So let's get enemy manager. Oh, I hate this so much. Let's just spawn one enemy. Invoke. And there we have it. So now if we look at whatever. So the, uh, here is our our enemy. And if we look in the object pool, we got the honor that was assigned to us. And here is the dummy enemy that it's that it has spawned. So now we, I was not ah oh, cut it. I wanted to unpause it. Shit. Okay, let's let's do this again because this is so fun. Invoke. Okay, let's pause it. Okay, so we have this here. We have the dummy enemy. Let's look here at the end of the tower and watch our enemy come up. And when this is gonna come up? The enemy disappeared and we forgot to release our object pool. So right now, so so in the code we did this, uh, this uh, spawner pool get. So we got an instance, but we never returned the instance back to the back to the object pool. So this instance, as it, as it is right now, no one has a reference to it, and uh, the object pool won't assign this uh, reference to anyone else um, 
because it doesn't know that uh, that it's not uh, no longer uh, in use. So what we have to do actually, so after everything is done, for each for each spawner, we're gonna say spawner pool release this dot game object. And that's going to ensure us that after everything is done and we no longer need those spawners, they're going to be returned to the to the pool. So let's do this again. This add an enemy wave definition. Add a dummy enemy. Invoke. And let's. See action so we have this which is active this got out and we return the spawner to the object pool so now the object pool knows about it and we can actually see this if we go to, to to the uh, to the asset we have instances in here and we can see both instances are not active and we also have a little cute thing we have a history for what whatever happened to this object pool so right here we know uh, when and what happened. So for example, we queued two new instances to spawn and we also look at where this came from. So we have debug functionality built in into the into the object pool. So this is basically the, the this is the call from the pre war that that we see right here. Yeah, so yeah, we have this now. So this is awesome. So we no longer have um, uh, that list of uh, spawners for each enemy. We are getting uh, a, an, for, yeah, we're getting uh, an object pool for each enemy that we get, or enemy definition, or whatever enemy definition. We get a pool, we assign the data, and then we. We use them and then release them after we no longer need them. And now that I think about it, with this setup in place, we actually don't care if we have to create entries. So in the in this enemy, uh, wave enemy definition, I don't care if we have if we have the same enemy twice, because I'm I'm gonna assign a a different object pool anyway. So the task that we've done previously might not make sense anymore. So let's see, let's look at the backlog a bit. So we've created, yeah, we've created this. So this no longer makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, not. I might keep it, but not as an error, but as a warning. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to think about this if this is still because for this uh, for this use case is no longer needed because we don't we don't care about duplicates. If you put duplicates, I'm just gonna it's gonna the code is gonna work fine. But the question still remains if we actually need to add duplicates in here. Yeah, I'll have to think about it. So I'll see. For now, uh, for now, actually, I'm gonna keep it. But I'm gonna think. Uh, I'm gonna think about it more uh, later on. Okay. So we have the enemy manager. Is it does the spawning? It has these events. So whoever needs to know, it's gonna be. Uh, notify from outside that uh, that the, the wave is uh, complete that all the enemies have been spawned killed anything else to do in the spawner I don't think so use multipliers yeah this is something that we'll have to do but that's uh, that's for when we're gonna do real enemies because now we're still uh, using this dummy enemy so and we'll have to 
to think of how we're gonna um, yeah make those those enemies. Um, one thing. Uh, let's uh, let's remove the the dummy spawner. Now this is no longer used. I mean, we we no longer need it. And we're gonna remove the object from here as well. Let's make a game object with managers. Enemy game manager. Oh, we have a game manager. What what have we done with the game manager? Ah, so he knows. Uh, yeah, I knows a bit of, of how to save the game or stuff, something, right? Ah, it just plays the game. So when after everything is loaded, we just play the game and then we have this dummy button because we had nowhere else to put it. We're saving. Yeah, we're gonna add this more um, in the next, uh, next task. Is there any other uh, manager that I have to put in here? I don't think so. That's everything. But yeah, this is a good start. So now we uh, start. Uh, we basically start. Uh, we've started using the the data we've modeled in the previous streams, uh, and we're making components that use uh, use this data. Yeah, this is actually quite nice. Okay, I think we're done for this task. Let's. Uh, okay, so the, I'm gonna have to put a task in ES Framework to add this. Um, I'm gonna put a reminder. So I do it later. Uh, no, no, I don't want you. I want. Where's my calendar? Add a reminder for me. When? I don't know. Object pool ESF uh, uh, and yeah, on the third of July, which is today, and at four p.m. Sure, no, three p.m. Because now it's two p.m. Okay. So we have made this change. We've Create this, this dummy enemy and whatever, or we've changed stuff on it. Yeah, because we've added the, the prefab. We have the object pool for the spawners and the prefab for the spawners. Spawned enemies list. Yeah, this is the runtime set for, for our enemies. We've made some changes on the dummy enemy. What have we changed here? Oh, yeah, we've made them die correctly. When they reach the top, they die instead of looping, uh, instead of. So we can test the functionality, the enemy image, just look through it and see if there's something that we ha we need to change. So let's look at ports. There's no system in here, which is amazing. Uh, this is no longer needed. There we go. This is something that we have to change. Actually, I can change it in here just like so. Uh, we have the tower data with the spawner pool. We have this, uh, those two things, the on complete. I'm gonna remove the button because we no longer need it. Or actually, no, I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it and I'm gonna remove it after I make the the waves uh, manager. So let's just save this and see if uh, Unity compiles. Let's hope it does. It did that. Oh, I'm still ha I'm still getting this uh, this error. So I have to look into it. I don't know why this is happening. Ah, I, I haven't. Oh, the current time of the economy start because the game object time is spawner is inactive. Oh, okay. Okay. Actually, it does make sense. I'm trying to load uh something that is disabled. I should be able to do it, but yeah, this is another that I'll have to to look so this is still uh, this is also part of uh, this framework yeah yeah I'll just make tasks for for in a, in a bit but let's continue looking through through this 
so yeah we've looked at the dummy enemy uh we've had that uh, we've looked at this let's look a bit at the enemy spawner no funky imports this looks fine we'll have to do this to do sometime um, but that's gonna be a separate task for, for enemies enemy spawner and tower builder what have we done to tower builder ah with that uh, that count yeah five that's that's okay we're gonna keep that for testing and the wave definition uh, we've added the spawn rate and we've added this way of getting the multipliers nice okay so we're gonna commit this because this looks fine and we've blew away our budget for i mean not necessarily budget but our estimation for for this task so we're almost at two hours instead of one but it's actually it's it's okay so feature and we don't have music that's that's not cool wait anime manager so let's publish this scroll for a bit and just pick something from here hailstorm i haven't listened to hailstorm in a while but let's see what should be listened to let's try let's try vicious Yeah, so this took actually more than I, more than I thought. So what's what's the time right now? So it's two p.m. I wonder if we should get into the wave manager right now or just uh, stop the stream right here because I I'll have to do some things uh, later on today, and I have to do some things in the house. So do it. I don't have to forget it. I have to eat what I get myself. Um, so, so the the wave manager shouldn't be that hard to do because the only thing that this does is so he receive he receives a wave from. Receives a wave from the level manager. Yeah, I think we're gonna just do it. Because I, I don't think this is a, a hard task to do right now. So let's put this in progress. Let's track the time and just just be done with it. But this this oh um this hasn't this was not published. Come on, thank you. Okay, so let's do this. So wave manager. So it's gonna be in the waves folder. Oh, wait. Butcher that so so bad. Waves manager. Okay, this is gonna be a mono behavior. Let's hide the mono script because it's ugly. And let's see what we what we have to do. So let's get our um, enemy manager in here. Oh, I can drag it. Okay. Actually, let's uh, let me. Uh, um, update my rem my reminder to to include the core team from. Okay. okay so let's see what we have to do here so i for sure know that i want a public void setup here we're gonna get a wave definition wave definition yeah 
private enemy definition uh, not enemy definition enemy uh, manager enemy manager and let's serialize field yeah and this is just gonna go and do the setup in here and wave definition dot enemies that's all it's gonna do also uh, let's put a button on this let's go into the awaken here and Let's just call it incomplete. And actually we'll have a similar event in here as well. And this is, uh, um, and we can have the same name. Yeah, on enemy manager complete. Enemy, enemy. Enemy Uncomplete invoke and that's it Yeah Oh actually no, I'm not gonna call on complete uh, Not yet. so so there's one thing that we have here uh, so private let's call it private float cooldown let's put the realize field on this and let's make a actually we don't need a timer for this no we're just gonna do a private Load. Yeah, just call it. Yeah, I was gonna call it timer, but uh, private pool in cooldown or cooldown active. So actually in here, we're going to say cooldown active is true. We're going to have an update function. And we're going to say if cooldown active timer minus equal, uh, minus equal the time, uh, yeah, time dot delta time. And if timer is uh, less than zero, or less or equal to zero. We're gonna make the cooldown active false. And we are gonna do uh, this. So we're gonna complete this. And uh, also here, timer is gonna be cooldown. And let's call this, uh, Cooldown timer. And in here we don't do anything. We remove the system because I so much hate it. And we also need the. Hmm. Interesting. Actually, no. For this, I don't. I don't need this. But. Um, Oh, I could have used the delay helper here, and I might actually do that. Hmm. I could use that. Let's look in the... Um... Uh, 
So I remembered about something else. Uh, is this what I want? Yeah, this is what I want. Actually, I, I, I have done something special to this uh, this pool. So I get a component, and it gets me the uh, the delay helper, and then yeah, I can't release it, but I have to release it. Yeah, sure, that's no problem actually. Okay. Okay, so let 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 me talk about. Uh, a bit about uh, what this is. So, so what I, what I, what I, sh so I was trying to use the update to 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 do this cooldown, but I have to take into consideration that the game might be paused, so I have to look at the lifetime service, and um. Yeah, I'll have to get a reference to the lifetime service in here so that I know uh, if it's paused or not, and only then do this cooldown. But I remember that I have a system for this for 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 do for yeah for delaying something, and which takes into consideration the lifetime service, which is this uh, delay uh, delay helper or delay helper pool. Um, and yeah, you, you get an object that has this this method in it, which says, okay, how many seconds do you wanna do you wanna wait, and a call that uh, that uh, that should be called after that amount of time. But there's something that I. Hmm. I'm thinking that we might need, and it's something that I haven't done here. I'm thinking that we might need a way of knowing. Um, no, no, we can't use the delay helper because we'll have a, we'll have a, a button screen that uh, that you can press and skip this uh, this cooldown. So using this uh, delay helper, I mean this delay helper doesn't uh, doesn't allow that. You just schedule something and it just gonna happen you can't even cancel it uh, at least not at the moment you can cancel once you scheduled it that's it you it's there and it's gonna happen so yeah, actually we're not gonna use it we are uh, we are gonna do the life cycle service in here and do that as I said previously so if this is playing if it's not playing actually let's just return otherwise if the cooldown is active do your stuff in there and let's add a login here so we have an idea of done let's put a done in there And let's also put a a login here. Pull down timer F1. So we no longer need this. Now let's make. I think I think this is done. This is old. This is everything that we needed for for this. So waves manager. Uh, actually, it's not waves manager. It's wave manager, uh, singular. Hmm. 
Yeah, I'm gonna rename it Wave Manager without the S. There we go. Wave Manager. Let's get my Enemy Manager in here. Let's get my life cycle service in here let's see we need a 10 second cooldown and oh my god it's gonna be so pretty we're gonna use the assets now so if everything works i should be able to just get my way invoke this and enemies are starting to spawn i don't know what is there but uh and they're gonna die and uh, start getting a lot of messages. There we go. So this is the cooldown. And bam! The cooldown is done. So at this point, um, the level would be informed that the, the, the wave is done and it would uh, just uh, start uh, the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is all, all that I have to do for this. I I do want to do some cleanup in here, actually. I am mean, clean up, but um, yeah, actually it's clean up. So let's reverse those. Let's put a space in there. So we separate the two a bit. And I'm going to do some cleanup on the manager as well, I think. Yeah, so we have the lifetime service, service there. And then we have those, those two in here. And now, yeah, actually, now I can remove the button on the enemy manager because we no longer need it because we have the we have the, the better way of, of of starting this whole process. Yeah. And now let's do some more uh, public public void skip cooldown, which actually yeah is gonna just set the timer to zero. So the whole thing in the update function is still gonna happen so i don't have to 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 replicate the code in here we're just going to use whatever we have let's put a button on this too so we can test it and let's um let's play but let's make the wave a bit shorter so um wave definition let's make only two enemies with spawn rate of two and wave manager. let's assign that wave let's just invoke we got two enemies they're moving they got to the top one dead, two dead and then i can skip the cool and bam we instantly get to zero and then the cool is done nice now we just have to hook up to to some ui buttons and or this one to, to a new button and which is not actually that hard to do yeah no we're gonna do that later because have to show the the cooldown on screen and stuff like that so yeah we're gonna do that that in a later task but actually no let's keep the button in here because uh, maybe i want to do it later but yeah yeah so the the wave manager is all, also done So now we, now we have a way of, so, so we can define waves with the wave definition assets and we can actually play them. So this is nice. Wow, that would be cool to have a button right here and say, I want to play this wave and click on it. And uh, I mean, when the game is running, 
click on it and everything should uh, behave as if uh, that was the, how the game wanted it. That would be cool. On a wave, maybe on a on a level as well, have a button and just, okay, I want to play this level, go. Yeah, we'll see. It's for, I mean, for, for debug purposes, so we can easily test stuff. But yeah, this is this is actually nice. Okay, let's uh, let's review the code. There's not a lot of the, uh, a lot of that changed, but uh, let's see. So in the enemy manager, what have I done? Uh, remove some useless stuff. That's fine. Let's see how this looks. Like uh, yeah, I'll put some space there. We'll have this on complete on a week. We hook onto it or a uh, hook to the enemy manager one. When the uh, enemy manager is done, we start the cooldown timer. We have the setup function and the skip cooldown uh, functionality. And then we have the update, which is hooked. Oh yeah, let's uh, let's test this uh, also. I haven't done that actually. So let's play the game. Let's get my service in here. Okay, wave manager. Let's start a wave. And let's pause the game. Okay. The enemies uh, have stopped. So that's nice. Let's play again. That continued. As expected. And let's wait for the cooldown. So here we have the cooldown. Let's pause. And the cooldown paused as well. If we start playing again, the cooldown continues. Yeah, so it works. Is nice, and that's everything I've changed. Nice, so this is done, and we've actually um, finished it uh, before uh, or uh, in less time than I predicted. So, yeah, okay, but not to fix this feature. Okay, so this task is uh, is also done. So let's uh, move it into the completed tab or the column. And the only thing or the, the, the big thing that remains is level manager, but we're not gonna do it today. We're gonna leave it for, for, next, uh, for next week. And this game manager is basically just, yeah, this is a dummy thing. It's just gonna, so we'll have a way, maybe like, I don't know, press escape on the on the keyboard and just uh, pause the game and unpause it. So it's not gonna do a lot, not not, not right now. But it's just want the, the, the basic functionality from it. But yeah, but this, the, the level manager is gonna be maybe a, actually not gonna be a, quite that big, because Yeah, I don't know. Uh, there, there's, there's more to, 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 to work here. On a, there's more to do on the level manager. Yeah. We have the level manager. Things, things are gonna be interesting because we're gonna go back to, to the power builder. I mean, not go back to, to it, but uh, uh, start, start using the, uh, the expand functionality that the tower builder has. And then we're gonna get some gameplay. Because if we have the, the level, uh, or yeah, the level manager, we're gonna automatically start levels. So so we're gonna automatically start a game, or it's gonna automatically start playing uh, waves. And after that, yeah, we, we basically have gameplay. Because we get enemies. After that, we'll have to make enemies uh, smarter, so so they uh, actually damage the tower. And after that, there's not much left to do. I mean, not... what am I saying? Um, yeah, after that, we can 
working on uh, weapons, I guess. Yeah. Because if, if you have levels and uh, enemies in place, then we can start uh, damaging, uh, start, uh, start to damage the enemies by, by creating weapons. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, we're making progress. So everything that we've modeled in the, the last, uh, I don't know, two streams or three streams, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming together. So this is actually, yeah, this, this is actually nice. We almost have a, have the a basic gameplay loop. Let's try this again. And also, oh, I thought that was an error that was spamming in the in the console, and I panicked for a bit. But it's a cooldown. Okay, um, let's try something else. Uh, let's, let's let's do something in this. So let's try to do multiple um, enemies. So let's do ten enemies at a very fast rate, and do the same enemy. Also ten enemies, but per second, something like this. And let's try to play. And we can drag it actually. Boom, 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 boom. We have the train of enemies, and then we have those others. Oh, there is a split there, yeah. And boom, that that just that just happened. Nice. And now I can invoke it again and just play it again, basically. And we get a cool Awesome. So this works. Yeah, so I think we're gonna we're gonna stop the stream here. Let's um, commit those changes. Oh, I've actually committed the the. Yeah, let's. Uh... And it's not a feature, but sure, doesn't impact functionality. So let's publish this. Okay. Yeah. So, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the stream here. Um, yeah. Yeah. We've we've made quite some progress today. We've almost uh, made the gameplay, not not quite a gameplay loop, but but the basic loop in the game. The the only piece remaining is the the level manager, and after we have that, we can start. Uh, we can make make it so the game starts by itself. By okay, it has a list of uh, levels and it starts playing them. And after that, uh, we're gonna open up so so much more uh, stuff that we can do with enemies, with uh, uh, weapons. We can start doing the powers that the user has um, to damage enemies. We can do the, the 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 expansion of the tower. So yeah, there's after after we have basic stuff, um, we're able to to branch out into multiple into multiple places. So yeah, we're gonna unlock a lot of more places we can work on. I mean, we could have worked on let's say weapons but without uh, having like enemies or uh, money or 
yeah other systems in place it would be like uh, yeah it wouldn't make sense to start working on them but now that we have uh, at least the foundation uh, of the game with the tower and the the waves and the levels yeah we'll be able to start uh, working on those other uh, on those other features yeah okay so yeah i'm gonna stop the stop the stream here um yeah thanks for uh, stopping by and uh, listening to me trying to make this uh, game work so yeah uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see each other uh, next saturday um so yeah yeah um take care and bye